Hi, welcome to Get In, the connected vehicle podcast from BlackBerry. I'm your host, Steve Kofsky. Within this series, we'll be diving into what the future of transportation just might look like. And today, I'm very happy to be joined by Fabrizio Martini. Fabrizio, thanks so much for joining us. I wonder if you would introduce yourself and your company to the audience. Of course. Thank you, Steve. Uh, thank you for hosting me. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, and um, have a chat about connected vehicles and the future of mobility. Um, my name is Fabrizio Martini. I'm the co-founder and CEO at Electra Vehicles. Electra is an innovative uh, technology company uh, based in Boston and uh, with presence in uh, California, Italy, and Japan. And um, we uh, started Electra about five years ago when I was a principal investigator for a NASA project. And uh, with the NASA team, we're working to um, develop a, a rover for exploration of Venus, uh, an electric rover. And in that, uh, in that time, they needed help with the, the design of the battery packs, uh, the analytics, in particular predictive analytics, as well as the control and uh, in particular active control. Uh, so I've seen an opportunity into providing those innovative solutions based on software technology. And um, me and my co-founder and the team, we started a, the business about uh, five years ago from that uh, NASA project. I want to dig into that a little bit more. But first, I want to talk about your background prior to that. You actually foresaw a career for yourself in the automotive industry before you discovered outer space, it sounds like. Um, if you would tell me a little bit about your first experience behind the wheel of an automobile and did that change the trajectory of your life and career to any extent yes absolutely so i moved from earth to to space back to earth so i i'm from italy originally i graduated at polytechnic of milan and my um studies were in uh, an automotive vehicle dynamics and i was going to work for a couple of major uh, OEMs in Italy that you all know. Um, and, but then I decided to move to United States to do an American experience. I told my dad, I'm going to stay one year in US and then come back. Uh, and then it's been 12 years that I'm here. So um, uh, USA, uh, America really helped me and uh, uh, kind of um, welcomed me um, when I joined uh, a master at Northeastern University. And uh, I did my master into energy storage. So I started to look... Uh, um, that aspect of the technology. And I've seen there was a lot of uh, potential and opportunities there. And then that's where I started to work for the United States government. I worked for the Department of Energy um, that about uh, 10, 15 years ago, we're investing a lot into energy storage and still nowadays. Um, and then I worked for the U uh, USA Department of uh, Defense and finally the NASA. And uh, with the NASA team, we started to work on the project that I was mentioned to you before. Um, but all pushing to electrification, application of batteries and energy storage. And uh, as I mentioned, about five years ago, we started to take some of that technology back to Earth. And that's why uh, we started Electra at that time. So back here on Earth, people say that Americans have a huge love affair with their cars, but it's, it's, we have nothing on Italy in that area. When you first got behind the wheel, you had this very different experience probably of a car with a combustion engine, you have the noise and everything. Are people going to feel the same passion for driving electric vehicles as they do for their combustion engine vehicles? I don't think so. I think the experience of driving electric vehicles is a uh, slightly different from uh, regular um, engines. Um, but uh, I think it can bring a lot of uh, interesting aspect, you know, for sure, the acceleration that electric vehicles provide, the the, the silence, uh, as well as the, um, uh, the control that you can have, uh, the stability of an electric vehicle is something that you don't have in regular gas engine uh, powered vehicles. So I think there are different sensations. There is going to be a transition. Uh, of course, some of the uh, biggest are passionate about uh, regular vehicles will take some time, but all the new generation and the following on generation will definitely fall in love with electric vehicles because it's, a, it's really a new technology that uh, can bring a lot of efficiency to the mobility in general. So I don't see this big wave to, to stop anytime. Those of us who've spent decades and decades watching the progression of solar energy, of battery charging, of, of battery uh, technology, um, it's been a relatively, it seems like it's been a slow progression, but you've seen it really at the cutting edge where um, you have very finite resources it's, you know, it's everything that you brought with you to that planet. That's all you've got. Um, 
And uh, what did you learn from that experience that you're now applying to the the cars that all of us are, are going to be driving? Yeah, so um, uh, that was a great experience. Uh, I think overall the USA government is really supportive, innovative technologies that can help uh, the transition to green technologies uh, to reduce the impact, uh, the environmental impact of uh, mobility, of uh, transportation and, and, and more. Um, so I've seen that the... Um, Department of Defense, uh, Department of Energy, and NASA were investing into these technologies. And uh, in particular, as you mentioned, in, uh, in outer space, uh, um, uh, there is no oxygen, so you will need uh, the other sources of, uh, of power. Um, and the, every kind of exploration uh, through a rover, through a balloon, to um, a drone or so, will need to be uh, powered by electricity or um, other source, but definitely... Uh, not a regular uh, gasoline engines. And um, so thanks to that experience, what we have seen is that uh, the battery was a critical component of, of that uh, rover for, explore, uh, for exploration. And, um, and yes, the battery was very critical, very important. What uh, the NASA team were looking for is, uh, was to um, make sure to predict uh, any, any potential failure of the energy storage, make sure to power properly the, the vehicle, as well as uh, be able to, to talk to the station and to Earth. So that's part of the, the connected vehicle aspect that we're going to talk about. And yes, a lot of concentration of the batteries and how to improve the energy storage over time. In fact, another aspect they were looking for is to deploy an in in active control, something that uh, a brain that could learn how the battery was deployed and utilized and improve over time. And that's what we develop at Electra that we call EVI, our brain for batteries. Well, that's really exciting. If you were to look forward 10, 15 years, what do you think the environment is going to be for transportation? What's our experience going to be? How's it going to be different from today? We're going to have uh, a lot of more uh, electric vehicles for sure. Um, every government is trying to push uh, to, to support that. Um, we have the uh, USA Biden ad administration that is targeting 50% of electric vehicle sales uh, by 2030. Uh, we have the European Union uh, even more aggressive to, to that target. So definitely more and more electric vehicles. All the OEMs and tier one suppliers are working to uh, develop and deploy electric vehicles. Um, but also we're going to start seeing more and more autonomous vehicles as well. That is very linked uh, to, to electric because the two combined can bring very um, good efficiency. Um, and that's what we need in order to manage, uh, utilize the battery at the most uh, efficient uh, if that we can. Um, so I foresee more and more electric vehicles. This is an unstoppable wave. Uh, we are going to experience and drive and potentially purchase or lease an electric vehicle, as well as uh, combine with autonomous. We are seeing more and more uh, self-driving vehicles with or without driver that are going around. Um, there is going to be the, the opportunity to, for people to rent or book uh, or, or lease a, 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 an electric vehicle or an autonomous electric vehicle as a service or owned. Um, and then I, I think also there's going to be a lot of uh, connectivity between vehicles. So the vehicles will start to learn from each other, will start to interact from each other. And that's, uh, that's the beauty of uh, uh, the, the technology coming up. I really for, can't wait to, to see that happening. That's really remarkable. Tell me a little bit more about this feature where the driver can select a button on the dash and the car will go further and extend the range. What's actually occurring to make that happen? So what we have developed at Electra, um, it's called uh, EVI, is really a brain for batteries that can be deployed into any electric vehicles, any battery packs of any chemistries from uh, uh, NMC, NCA utilized by Tesla, um, LFP, also innovative cell chemistries like solid state batteries. And uh, as you mentioned, the, the range is something very critical, in particular for the user experience. We want longer range, we want accuracy of the range. And uh, so what we have done, uh, with a great team of um, experts in uh, machine learning, AI, uh, data scientists, uh, and software developers, is really to understand uh, how the battery was going to behave in a vehicle and with a, a specific driver and uh, adapt the control strategy. One of the features that we are uh, deploying is called um, uh, EVI um, velocity recommendation. So we help, we coach the driver on how fast to go and we give some recommendation on how how fast to go to, to reach destination. And that helps to um, 
reach destination at the same time, but uh, saving some energy of your of your batteries. We also have another feature uh, that we are bringing to market is called the dynamic set of charge, EVI dynamic set of charge. And that gives the ability to um, push a button and uh, acknowledge that you're going to receive an additional 50 miles, 100 miles or more uh, for a specific trip that you want to do for a weekend that you want to go out uh, with your kids or, or with your fiance somewhere. And um, so that gives you the ability to, to extend the range of your electric vehicle for certain, certain goals and uh, um, certain extra mileage that you want. Um, so these are two of the features that we are deploying. We are seeing very good uh, extended range between 24 to 28% extra range with a single charge. Uh, thanks to managing all the data that come out from the battery, from the vehicle, from the driver, and from the environment. So great potential with the software layer uh, on top of the batteries. This feature where you can press a button and interact with the vehicle and get it to go further, it must be some kind of a trade-off, um, whether it's whether it's uh, speed or comfort or something, right? How do you... Uh, um, how do you handle that? What's actually occurring underneath? Yes, in reality, the, the experience to the driver is not uh, perceptible. So it's really a seamless uh, adjustment of the control strategy. So the battery is a very sensitive component and it really changes the performance based on the temperature, the environmental temperature, the humidity, um, the recharge um, and the acceleration and so on. So it's a very sensitive. So what we have seen is that sometimes the battery um, is less stressed, is able to uh, push to the boundary condition and uh, provide that extra mileage. So the EVI um, adaptive uh, cell model and dynamic set of charge, that is the feature that we are talking about, uh, really what it does is uh, push the maximum minimum limits of the batteries when it's safe to do so. When we see that there is the ability to do that, uh, we adjust the limit the boundary conditions. Um, of course, after a fast charge or after other condition, extreme cold or extreme heat, that won't be uh, available or will be reduced. But there are certain times that the battery is healthy, it's very uh, relaxed, so it can push uh, to, to the limit and give you that extra range. Another thing that is starting to come up for people who've been driving electric vehicles for some time is... Uh, batteries tend to wear out and uh, the, the length of service for a battery is very important. It's such an expensive component of these cars. How is that, how are you affecting that and, and what are the trends we're going to see going forward on that? You're, you're correct, Steve. So the, the lifetime is another aspect. The first that the driver feels the experience is the range, the limited range. Drivers want more range, and we are working on that with the, the velocity recommendation, dynamic set of charge features that I was telling you about. But then the other aspect is the lifetime. Every, uh, we want the battery to last longer. Uh, now most of the OEMs and tier ones are providing eight years of lifetime for warranty, sometimes 10, uh, but we definitely want more. Uh, you know, we would like... Uh, 12, 15, 20 years. And that's also important for the environment because a battery that lasts longer, uh, you can utilize more that vehicle and you don't have to replace the battery. So it's a very important and critical aspect of the lifetime. Uh, with our brain for batteries, what we do is really collect uh, um, all the information around the batteries, the vehicles, the drivers, and the environment. We feed them into uh, neural networks, into this brain for the batteries. And uh, we recommend certain aspects such as the, the charging path. What should be the overnight charging? Um, we, uh, as an output, we recommend uh, to the vehicle itself how to recharge the battery pack overnight. Um, there is a strategy to, to improve the lifetime as well as uh, which path to take to reach destination. Uh, we have another solution called route optimization that helps to um, uh, limit the wear of the batteries. So a combination of these two features, um, overnight charging as well as the route optimization, provide an increase of lifetime of about 30%. Um, in certain cases and studies, um, with the combination of a secondary pack, we have seen up to twice the lifetime. But most of the time when we work on a single chemistry, we have seen 30% uh, extended lifetime. So that means... Uh, um, 30% less cost of ownership as well. So very, very critical, the lifetime, as you are mentioning. An important component of this is 
the ability to do all of this processing at the edge within the vehicle and to collect uh, and, and utilize all of the data that uh, the, the vehicle is, is producing. This is, of course, where uh, BlackBerry is involved. If we look at the car as a computer, which is becoming more and more, you know, less, less of what we think of as a car, more of what we think of as a computer. Um, what's happening on that bus? What, what's, what's allowing all, you to do all of this, uh, this calculation and apply all of this technology within the car itself? So I believe we have a big opportunities nowadays um, because um, we started to collect, as you mentioned, more and more data from the vehicle, from the environment, from the battery um, and the driver itself. Thanks to all these sensors, um, we have seen the, the big wave of ADAS sensor for autonomous driving. Um, so all of these help us to create a lot of data. And uh, now what uh, OEMs and tier one suppliers um, have is the opportunity to leverage those data to create value to create safety, to reduce the environmental impact. And uh, it's a big, big opportunity that we have, um, this amount of data. But as you mentioned, we need to make sure to uh, leverage those data in a, in a proper way. And uh, one way to do is uh, through edge computing, as well as cloud computing, and that um, have been uh, uh, improving uh, the performance over time and establishing uh, the, the opportunity. And the, the relationship with BlackBerry we have is the fact that uh, BlackBerry has a new innovative platform called Ivy that helps to uh, act as a middleware and helps to collect all this data and the, from all these sensors that we've been talking about and in, improve and uh, create a new synthetic sensors that can uh, help to, to develop applications and protocols like the ones that uh, we're talking for, the velocity recommendation, dynamic set of charge, and so on. So the ability to, to collect the data, compute some of those data um, for synthetic and uh, for sensor and synthetic sensor, and um, uh, come up with um, with value, with value to the driver, value to the OEM, to the tier one, and to the vehicle itself. Um, so I, I believe there is a big opportunity, and we're gonna see more and more applications similar to EVI coming out for uh, method of payments for method of recharging the batteries, method of uh, um, utilizing the infotainment and more. So, and increasing the safety as well. Your background is so interesting. And I think space is one of those incubators for technologies that we, we then see the progression as it comes back to earth and is spread out through consumer technologies and into industry. Another one, especially in automotive, is motorsports, things like Formula One. Formula E, a lot of innovation occurs there on the track. And then we later see it on the roadways. Tell me a little bit about that progression. Uh, you're correct. So most of the new technologies um, often come up from, from space, uh, as well as from uh, um, high-performance vehicles like uh, Formula One, um, Formula E, and so on. Those are really test bed to uh, demonstrate new technologies. Uh, over the last uh, 30 to 40 years, we have seen a lot of uh, new technologies coming out from the Formula One races. And, and of course, uh, uh, being from Italy, uh, we had the passion for, for that. We, I've been, I actually grew up close to Monza, where the circuit is, very close by there. I was going every year to watch uh, uh, you know, um, Ferrari, Mercedes, and many other companies uh, challenging each other and competing. But I was interested also in to uh, see uh, all the new technology, all the latest technology they were testing. And then we, everybody was able to benefit from the regular vehicles a couple of years after. So I, I agree with you. There is a very big opportunity with, the, with that aspect. Lately, what we have seen is that uh, the Formula E started to, to ramp up. Um, I'm glad to see more and more opening from the, uh, the FIA that um, showcase and give a little bit more uh, liberty to, to companies to explore different battery technologies, different control algorithms, different uh, powertrain design and strategies. So I believe there is a, a big opportunity there. And just an insight, when we started Electra vehicles uh, in 2015, um, one of the first case studies that we've done was actually on Formula E. So we are taking a couple of trucks uh, of, uh, of that uh, championship and we are taking the power profile of that and we are applying some of the knowledge and insight that we transfer from NASA about how do we manage the battery? How do we optimize uh, the batteries? How do we give a little bit extra range uh, 
Uh, we'll still see a couple of vehicles that are not able to complete all the laps, uh, the eight, nine, uh, ten laps of the Formula E. Um, so we were trying to give the extra range, give that extra power to the vehicles, and we've seen great results. So one of the first case studies for Electra was actually applied to Formula E. So that's uh, that's quite interesting. I think uh, there are, we're going to see more and more advancement there, and uh, I can wait to to see what they come up with. Do you think the fans are going to be as excited about Formula E as they are about Formula One? Uh, you know, is it's going to be a different experience being in the stands and being able to hear yourself when the cars go by. Um, but is is it going to uh, rouse that same passion? You think? I think so. I often go with my with my dad to to watch those kind of races, Formula One and Formula E. Of course, he's a, a previous generation. He loves uh, Formula E and. Uh, um, uh, he doesn't wear hair plugs because he wants to hear the noise and the engines and so on. And I'm wearing, uh, I'm wearing those. So, um, but I think it's gonna be a, a, a cultural uh, change that we're gonna face. And uh, Formula is actually improving year after year. So think about in 10, 15, 20 years, we're gonna break the records that we're already breaking in some of the circuits. Uh, we're gonna have more and more laps. Uh, we have uh, great uh, speed and great acceleration. So I think the performance is going to be surpassing the, the Formula One. The question is when? Is it going to take 10 years, 15 years, 20 years? That's, we don't know. But companies like BlackBerry with Ivy, with the Electra, with the EVI, we could help those kind of performance to, to improve as well. Well, it's exciting to see that develop. Um, in your work with the automotive industry and with, with particular OEMs, what are some of the challenges that they're facing that, um, that, that you're helping them overcome? So we are still seeing a lot of uh, recalls, unfortunately. So we are experiencing a race to electrification, right? Every OEM and tier one suppliers are trying to push their vehicles, their new models to, to market. And um, unfortunately, we still see large recalls. Uh, this is, is done for safety. We want to make sure that uh, uh, the drivers and the people are safe. Um, but uh, that shows also a, a rush uh, from the engineering side to come up with a new product. So I think that the level of recalls should be reduced over the next couple of years. Um, that's why we develop a, a software platform called EVI Predictive Analytics that helps to predict failure. It helps to tell which batteries can last one or two extra years to provide additional warranties to the driver or the fleet manager versus the batteries that need to be recalled. And most of the time, you don't need to recall half a million batteries or 100,000 batteries. You can just recall maybe um, a few hundreds or a few thousands and take care of those because those are the batteries that are actually having some trouble. So thanks to EVA Analytics, predictive analytics, we can spot those batteries and predict failure. And we have demonstrated this with a couple of our clients in the commercial vehicle industry where we, can pre we could predict uh, um, three to six months in advance a failure. So th I think that's one of the challenges that we are still seeing. When you talk about fleets, we know that they are some of the earliest adopters of electric vehicles and they're doing it en masse. So they're learning a lot of lessons there. What are some of those lessons or perhaps hard lessons, some surprises? What are some of the unexpected consequences that they're experiencing? Absolutely. So um, our technology can be applied to uh, regular passenger vehicles uh, as well as commercial vehicles. We have seen a big traction to commercial vehicles and commercial fleet. And the reason is because uh, uh, there is a strong need for uh, reducing the cost of those fleet, re reducing the environmental impact of those fleet. So yes, you're right. There are fleet managers trying to switch to electric. Maybe they start with a 5-10% of their fleet, but they have the goals to go to full electric, 100% electric. So they started to do this program. There are several tier one suppliers uh, and OEMs building electric fleet for the fleet managers. But we have seen some challenges, you're right. And some of the challenges, uh, it's probably um, a shutdown of a battery while the driver is driving or with, uh, you know, with, uh, with no notice of, of that. Um, so that's something that um, it could occur. Uh, of course, companies are trying to solve this thanks to machine learning, AI, and modeling of the batteries and so on. Uh, but what we have seen is also the benefit aspect. Everybody that uh, is trying an electric fleet uh, starts to uh, uh, cutting down the cost. Um, and that's something very important for the fleet manager. In addition, 
there is the connected mobility aspect, who has a fleet of vehicles can start for, to learn from each other. So if you have a few thousands of vehicles, you can start learning from each other vehicles. Where are the vehicles that are behaving better in maybe a geographical area versus other? Uh, maybe w some drivers drive electric vehicles better than others, are less aggressive. That's why we came up with a green leaf uh, uh, um, scoring cards uh, and points to the better driver for EVs. So I think there is a, there is a big opportunity here, particularly for the commercial fleet uh, uh, and connected mobility. You've worked not only for NASA, but the Department of Defense and the Department of Energy. So I think you have a perspective here on the big picture, perhaps, and the impact that electric vehicles, connected vehicles can have in society and in our cities in particular. What are some of those benefits and how quickly do you think we'll start to reap them? So we are seeing two big trends. One is the Internet of Things. So over the last 20 years, we are seeing more and more connected object, smart houses, connected vehicles, uh, and more. So Internet of Things is a big wave that is happening thanks to all these connected world, uh, access to the internet and so on. And the other one is a vehicle to X. Vehicle to X means uh, vehicle to another vehicle, V2V, vehicle to infrastructure, V2I, or vehicle to um, grid, V2G. And uh, so these two big things, internet of things, as well as uh, the uh, V2X, uh, helps to learn uh, from what's around uh, the the vehicle i mean it helps to really uh connect the, the vehicle to the infrastructure we started to see smart lights for example providing insights on uh, whether the, the the light will be red or green as well as uh, buildings that will tell you if there is any available charging station and if so tell the vehicles to go there and, and recharge at a certain temperature and current uh, so that's something that uh, we've seen more and more. And uh, what our approach at Electra is also taking some of those inputs uh, and feed those in our uh, brain for batteries, in our EVI. That's why we call this solution 360 degrees solution. It's a really uh, 360 because we capture data where we can. And one of that aspect is the uh, ve vehicle to X. Uh, so the vehicle to infrastructure, other vehicles and uh, grid as well. Those are very exciting aspects, really, really at the edge of what's capable today. Talk about what the, how they're going to change the experience for the driver and the people in these vehicles, whether they're driving them or not, or whether the vehicles are driving themselves. How's it going to change that experience? I would say first, uh, safety will be increased. Uh, no more um, shutdown, recalls, uh, thermal runaways, or um, dropping the range uh, from 50% uh, um, to 20 just because it's, uh, it's cold outside or the algorithm was not uh, calculating the remaining charge left at the end of life. Uh, so I would say safety will be the first things that the drivers will experience, um, as well as the cost uh, of using electric vehicles. It's already l starting to go down year after year, but it will continue to go down because uh, the batteries will cost less and less. Uh, the manufacturing of battery packs will continue to cost less. And the software on top that we've been talking about will improve the performance. So there is a reduction of cost and improved performance of the software. And combined uh, makes the electric vehicle's usage very, very competitive that the regular gas engine won't be competitive anymore. Well, uh, I think that's a bright future. And it's one where we're going to enjoy the benefits of, of this. We're going to have these uh, wonderful vehicles that, that have capabilities that know us better than we know ourselves, that, that bring, out, bring out our better selves to, uh, to protect the environment and uh, contribute back to society. And uh, even the cars will have social lives of their own. Fabrizio, before we let you go, tell us what's next for Electra and what are you working on now? It's a very exciting time for Electra. We are in full mode of hiring. So we are hiring talents uh, from all over the world, all over the United States, uh, and in particular talents uh, with expertise in machine learning, uh, AI, uh, data scientist. Uh, um, so if you are have expertise on, on those fields uh, within the automotive, feel free to reach out, check out our website, electravehicles.com, send out your resume. And uh, so that's that's one aspect, as well as we are deploying this solution um, to with a couple of clients that we are testing and uh, uh, showcasing the benefits of this and uh, look forward to see you there. 
Well, that's the end of our episode for today. But if you'd like to get more information on the topics or our guest, check out blackberry.com slash podcast. Get in the Connected Vehicle Podcast from BlackBerry is available wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with our latest episodes.